Hey, buddy. I'm thinking of a four-letter word. You want to guess what it is? Nope, not that one. Not that one either. That's disgusting. Tell you what, let's talk about it today on The Lone Zone. Well, hey there. Welcome to The Lone Zone. I'm Tommy Mortgage. I'm dressed like I find my thrills on Blueberry Hill today because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the most popular non-conforming product of 2021, baby. Now, this bad boy of the financial world got a little bit of a reputation among the general public for being a little on the wild side. Now, it doesn't care about your job history, doesn't care about your financial obligations, and certainly doesn't care about your income. Too cool for all that, baby. I'm just trying to have a good time. Now, I'm talking, of course, about the DSCR loan. For those unfamiliar, DSCR stands for Debt Service Coverage Ratio. Now, simply put, a DSCR loan is a loan for investors only that focuses solely on the cash flow of the subject property. Now, DSCR loans are not exclusive to the mortgage world. It's existed in the world of corporate finance for decades as a means of raising sweet, sweet capital in short, short order using projected business income. The mortgage version came around sometime in the early 2000s, right when real estate investing was beginning to hit its peak as a result of dropping interest rates and rising property values. And then... Uh... Uh, nothing happened, and, uh... Now, it's important to note that the DSCR loans of today are a little bit tamer than their wild ancestors were. They've got a few more financial safeguards, such as LTV restrictions, tightened credit and reserve requirements, and in some cases, prepayment penalties. Ah, but don't let that harsh your mellow cat daddy. Let's take one out for a spin and see what she's all about. But what is a DSCR loan, anyway? Let's start with a brief disclaimer about what it's not. It is not a consumer loan. This is a business purpose loan meant for investment properties only. You, you cannot, cannot occupy any property purchased with a DSCR loan no matter how many units it is. DSCR loan looks at four basic metrics. Your down payment, your reserves, credit, and the cash flow of the property. Income, pfft, how passe. Taxes, oh, so gauche. Citizenship status, <laughs> what is this, East Germany? You're missing the big picture here. If the property makes money, or, you know, if it doesn't, we'll talk about that later. Then we're cooler than a drive-in banana split during a dual feature of Dial M for Murder and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Tell you what, let's skip the hypotheticals and check out one of these babies in action. <laughs> Get a load of Arthur over here. Arthur's got a couple investment properties. He's generally doing pretty well for himself. One day, on his way to Arnold's Diner, he has to stop. A sleek little two-unit for sale catches his eye. And he wants to buy it and keep it as a rental. He's got good FICO, landlord experience, 20% to put down and six months reserve so he can qualify on paper. Hey! But how does he know that it works? Come on, you're really gonna make me do the math on this? Let's get it over with. Let's say he knows he can collect 3,000 per unit. His gross rental income is gonna be 6,000. Now let's say his principal, interest, taxes, and insurance for pity is 4,000. If you divide his income to 6,000 by his debt obligation of 4,000, you get a debt service coverage ratio of 1.5. That means he's receiving one and a half times the amount he's making in mortgage payments per month. <laughs> Mr. Fonzarelli, you savvy dog. That's an easy one. Let's make it harder. See, Arthur's got bigger goals in mind than simple month-to-month -month rent income. I mean, he's got convertibles to buy and jukeboxes to punch. He wants to turn the world on its head. He doesn't have time for long-term tenants. What he wants is a short-term rental income property. Now, let's say the last owner did the same thing. Arthur can ask them for the rental history, be it from Airbnb or Verbo or whatever it was, and we could use that number as the rental income. But let's say Arthur's venturing boldly into new territory with this one, and it's never been done at this property before. Well, that's still fine, because he's got some options. Option one is do a regular appraisal and go off typical month-to-month -month market rent. Now, sometimes this is fine, but if you're in a market with elevated prices, you might find your typical month-to-month -month rents don't cover your pity payment. That in itself might not be an issue, we'll get to it, but Arthur wants the best rate he can get, Papa Shark. Option two, check out the neighborhood. Is anyone else Airbnb their place there? Is it a tourist hotspot? Some lenders will accept AirDNA results, which is a modified version of the appraisal form 1007. That's the form that determines market rents. It projects the short-term rental earnings capability of the subject property based on the surrounding market. Hey, but this ain't the beach, Chief. This is Midtown Milwaukee. Square Central. Now, Arthur gets the vision and sees the potential, but he's probably the only one right now. Option three, ditch that ratio. Hey, you heard me right. Get that ratio the heck out of here. We don't need it. Cramping our style. Now, how does that work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. 
your credit's good enough and you're willing to throw a little more down and or you've got a little more reserves in the bank than you would need with a traditional DSCR loan and you don't mind a little bit of a higher rate, you can kick that ratio to the curb. That's right. Ugh. Eat road, nerd. Now, one brief caveat here, your rate with a no ratio DSCR loan is definitely going to be higher than it would be with a traditional DSCR loan with a ratio. So think of it more as a last resort option, but it is an option. Hey, hey, Arthur, you greasy devil, you've done it again. Ha! Ah, what are you doing in here, Cunningham? Get out of here. Loan zone is for cool people only. God, this, this guy. Hey, why don't you make like your brother in season two and disappear forever without an explanation? Hey! Real mature. Wait until Arnold finds out about this one. <sighs> All right. I guess it's time we talked about the elephant in the room. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. He, he's fine. No, I'm talking about a particularly toxic element surrounding the DSER discourse that I'm going to refer to as entrepreneurial grift. Now, I'm not going to link anybody's videos, but you know exactly the element I'm talking about. Bro, do you even want to make money? Because if you do, this is how you do it. I'm going to put you up on game real quick. This is how it happens. So I buy three houses, all DSCR. I live in all three of them at the same time. Very difficult. Bam. Turn around, three HELOCs on those houses. Then, then, I turn around, buy three more houses, all DSCR. HELOCs on those houses. Bam. Turn around, buy a Lambo. This is what I'm talking, this is what I'm talking about, okay? I'm so far ahead of you, I get... I, my day is three hours long, okay? So that means I get eight days a day, right? So that means the work day, I get, I get four, uh, four, three uh, per, per day, per day. Like if, you don't, if you don't keep up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lap you in my Lambo, because it's very fast, and I'm gonna live at my rental properties. Now, step four, move back in with mom. Now, obviously, I love a little razzle dazzle as much as the next guy, but please do your research before you start investing in properties with these types of loans. And be super wary of ever doing business with anybody who considers themselves a guru. A goo, guru. Goo. I can't, I can't say that word. Now, my intent here, obviously, is not to dissuade you from real estate investing. Or even doing so using DSCR loans. But you should just be a little bit realistic. Owning a rental property is not always the passive income that the grifters will make it out to be. Just keep in your head, this is a business purpose loan. And as such, you should be treating this investment property as a business. You will reasonably have to give it some attention from time to time. And like all businesses, your expectation should not be to just dive in and get rich overnight. <laughs> now, go out there and get some leases. <coughs> ah! God! Really? <coughs> DSCR frequently asked questions lightning around. Let's go. Do I need to own a property to qualify for one of these? No. Do I need landlord experience? Nope. Can I close with an LLC? Yes. How much of the LLC do I need to own? 25% bucko. Can I get a gift? Yes. As long as you're contributing 5% of the down payment and the reserves are yours. Can my DSCR be under one without having to ditch the ratio entirely? Yes. Does it work for mixed use and commercial properties too? It sure does. What are the average reserve requirements? Typically about six months mortgage payments for the subject property and three months for any other properties in your portfolio. If I buy a multifamily, can I occupy one of the units? No. Nope. All right, Bob, I don't make the rules. Do I need a lease in place in order to close? You don't. Probably not a bad idea though, right? What if I want to buy a primary residence? Well, and you're going to have to tune in next week, my friend, because we're going to talk about another non-conforming product you can use to buy a primary. And best part of all, you still don't need taxes or W-2s to do it. Till then, this has been The Loan Zone. I've been Tommy Mortgage. Thanks to all my friends for helping me out today. You too, Cunningham. Get in here. You, you helped. The Lone Zone was recorded in front of a live studio audience. This story was a work of fiction. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. No animals were harmed in the making of this particular. Oh. Correction, one animal was harmed. <laughs> <laughs>